Yeah. Hello and welcome to another edition of Mock Family Games. Tonight we're uh, reviewing a game for uh, some family members. Uh, we got a gift for Christmas and they don't know how to play it. So we figure we'll make them a video and you as well. And that game is? Quinto! Quinto is uh, like a realm right? And it's also kind of like the game Knock Mall in that way. And you're writing, and you're using these pencils and writing on your own board. So a roll and write is a game where you roll something and you write something down. Uh, Quinto is a slight step up from Quix, which is the kind of the 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 the, 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 the offspring of. Um, it takes a lot of the mechanisms from Quix and adds a little more gamey to it. Uh, so the game is really simple. There are three die. And there's a score pad for each player. Uh, there's 100 pads included in the box. Um, we're down to our last two in this box. We'll have to order a refill. Um, on my turn, I'm going to shake one, two, or three die. If I shake one die, we are all writing that number down. You can shake the die two times. If I decide, if I, so I rolled a two yellow. If I don't like that because it's not a good spot for me to play it, I can roll it again, but I can't go back and say, oh, I'll take the two after all. So now I'm using a yellow four, so is she. And the game is where we place that yellow four. So for the sake of the video, uh, I'm gonna place it here. And the reason I'm gonna place it there is we have to go ascending order. So I can't have anything over four in this space. But there are times I'll be shaking two and three die, so my numbers can theoretically be anywhere from one to 18. So I played a four there. You want to play a four for us, Pacey? Sure, I need a, need a pencil. pencil. She'll play a four. I'll play a four in a pentagon. Right. Uh. Yeah, that's, that's fine. In the orange, yeah. And then Wait, no, you rolled a yellow. Yep, yellow four, yep. So I'll have to put it there. So now she has the option to shake one, two, or three. And in this case, I'll just uh, shake a yellow, I mean a orange one. And I got a six. I don't really like that, so I'm gonna roll that again. And it's a four. Orange four. So once again, we have to play. Now here's the first rule that comes into play. I cannot play the same number in the same row or the same column. So I cannot play it here. I can play it here, but I don't want such a low number in my pentagon, but I really have no choice. So I'm gonna put my four there because I can't play in the same row or same column. So there's my four. And now it's my turn again. And I'm gonna shake yellow and orange. I'm gonna leave the purple out. And I roll the nine. I like a nine. I'm gonna play the nine. So she has to play the nine as well. Now, another rule. Since I rolled orange and yellow, I can play my combined nine on orange or yellow. I can't split them and play four and five. I'm playing the combined total of my dice always. So nine, yellow or orange. I'm gonna play on my yellow and I'm gonna place it here. I played on my orange, so it looks like this for mine. So I'm, so she played on her orange, I played on my yellow. I'm ascending, and now I won't be able to play a nine purple here. Um, and I have a lot of room in here to play. I can play a five, six, seven, or eight in here. So she's gonna go again. Um, I'm gonna roll just yellow and orange again. Just yellow and orange again, okay. We are kind of excluding the purple. Um, seven. So that's seven. Uh, first, I like to see like a seven, and uh, in this case, I like a seven. She likes it. We're gonna keep it. So yellow or orange, I'm gonna play it here, and I'm still following. And we're gonna play this through until any two rows are filled for one player. Once one player fills two rows, the game and fills two rows, the game will end immediately. You don't play until you finish all three rows. Um, so here we'll take a look at a finished score pad. We'll get those out of the way. Run those out of the way, kiddo. Okay. So this person did not finish two rows, which means someone else in their game did. So let's do the final scoring. So first we'll notice everything's ascending. 1, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. 2, 3, 8. Missed a couple because they, they had nowhere to play. They played an 8 there, and they played a 9 there. There was a mistake made it somewhere. They could have played a 7 there. They could have played an 8 there. Because then eight there and a seven there, they really locked themselves in. And the way the dice were coming out, they had too big of a gap. Um, so, so I'm guessing somebody rolled an eight and they didn't have an option to play anywhere else. Um, so ascending, ascending, 
ascending, they did complete that roll. So let's go through scoring real quick. On the orange roll, if you do not finish the roll, you only get a point for each space you filled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven yellow, or seven orange. On the orange roll, or yellow roll, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven points. If you finish a row, you get the last number in that row. So it's not eight for having, or nine for having nine rows filled in, it's 15. So seven, seven, 15. You also get points for every hexagon you fill that also completes that column. So the first hexagon, they had a five in that spot. It's filled, so they get a five. The next one over, where are we? Right here. Five in the orange, they filled that column. Five right there. The next one over is a 10. They filled the column, they get 10. 13, they get 13. 15. Um, if you ever can't play, you will take an X. But that's only on your turn. On your turn, if you roll something, if I rolled a 5 and I can't play a 5, I get an X. Every X is minus 5 at the end of the game, 4 X's, and the game will also end. That's another way to end the game. So the game will end when two rows are filled up for one player or when one player has 4 X's. At that point, whether you're playing with, with 2 people or 20 people, as soon as one person fills two, two rows or has four X's, the game ends immediately. The strategy is trying to get big numbers in these hexagons, but still being able to play uh, in, in, in the columns. And again, you cannot have a repeating number in a row or a column. So an easy game on the face of it. One thing we didn't cover, if you roll all three dice, you can play on any of the three lines. So that'd be a seven, three, three, one, total of seven. I can play on the orange, the yellow, or the purple line. And you announce it out. Um, and all in all, obviously we've played 98 games between us, so we like this game quite a bit. Uh, it takes about 7 to 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer if you have a higher player count. Uh, this is a game we'll play 5 or 6 times in an hour, um, and it's just great fun. So, any final comments from you? Well, I uh, normally like the Roman rights, and uh, what's frustrating to me is that like you can't put the one in the same uh, column. Yeah. So, like... Uh, often I will just put like I will have an eight in a column and then I'll put an eight right below it and then three seconds later I'm like wait this can't this can't isn't possible. Not possible I can't do that not a good play and you, you have to your first few times it's not a bad idea to have somebody who's played before watching you to check for that um, it, it's it, it's really easy to remember in the row to not do that in the column it, it it's not as easy and then you find out you're, you're like I can't play I'm stuck what do I do well, you take an X um, if it was your turn. Yeah. If it wasn't your turn, then you just don't play that turn. Um, and that's okay. Um, it just means somebody else wrote something down. They're going to be closer to finishing the game. The big points are finishing finishing out that row. You can kind of see here, you know, it was literally worth half the points for only missing two spots. So it's really important to be that person to finish both rows. Um, in most of our games, the person who finishes the game wins the game. I would say probably more than 50% of the time. And we're usually playing with six people. So that's a really good percentage. Um, there's a lot of strategy in this game. It's a ton of fun. And try it out. Quinto. Bye. Bye.